Hello all and welcome to the second part of Sunday's Q&A because Sunday Q&A started yesterday because I got back early Monday, uh, Friday rather and um, I'm kind of up against it at the weekend jobs. It's the thing about summer, you know, the garden needs doing and the cars need cleaning and suddenly dear, all just all time disappears, doesn't it? So um, I got a bit of a jump on it, so if you missed it, I'll do a link. Uh, we had a quick go at it yesterday, but we're going straight into Sunday Q&A, we're going straight into miscellaneous, you know. So, uh, yeah. Right, firstly, domain name guy says, because we're talking about, you know, sort of like um, self-driving vehicles and all that kind of stuff. He says, have a look at the Volvo trucks, Viera, um, the, and the autonomous truck. He said, Volvo doesn't even have a space for a driver. And Scania has an autonomous truck. Um, basically, yeah, it, it sort of dri trucks that drive themselves. Now, the thing about this is, I don't know about you guys, but what I find, that's lovely if... Um, what you need to do is you need to ship stuff from A to B on a regular basis. So say for example, we, we need to move six pallets every day from Amazon in Milton Keynes to Amazon in Hemel Hempstead. Then you can program them trucks to do that kind of stuff. Once you start going a little bit off-piste, the thing I, I mean, the thing I find probably the most irritating about my job is trying to find addresses. And you've got to go, well, where is it? Is it behind there? Is it over there? Now, it sometimes takes me 10, 15 minutes, plus all the research skills that I possibly got at my disposal to find an address. An autonomous truck isn't gonna do that. It's just gonna go and park. Sometimes I've had postcodes that I've been driving down the middle of a motorway and it says you've arrived at your destination. So I'm not gonna to worry too much, although I did see when we was on, um, uh, when I was doing my CPC training, and there is a Mercedes truck, which has got space for a driver, but what you basically the truck drives itself, even to the stage that it calculates what is cut up, the up and coming traffic and if it's worked out that the truck in front of you is doing 53 and you're capable of doing 56 it automatically overtakes the truck in front of you it's also got eye sensors so as a driver you have to keep both hands on the steering wheel and look at the um at the at the, the windscreen and um if you take your eyes off the windscreen for more than five seconds the truck starts fire, you know firing warning signs at you to me that is the ultimate in de-skilling and if if it what it comes down to that what I'd have to do as as a courier driver is basically pick the gear up, get in the truck, and drive for two hours like that, letting the lorry drive itself. I think I'll be looking for a different profession. That's a bit. Um, that's a bit. I can understand you driving the truck while the truck is also monitoring you. And if you haven't spotted an accident, but it spots an accident, that I'm in favour of. If it's spotted something you haven't, that's like having a co-driver, that's like having someone next to you going, mate, oh, I didn't see that. But on the whole, I'm not a great fan of the autonomous thing. So we'll see. Uh, van on the run, because I did I, I did genuinely ask this question about, you know, what is the difference between a Euro 5 and a Euro 6 and the emissions, and is it actually really just a small business tax on people like us that say, oh no, sorry, if you want to drive your uh, lorry into London, you've now got to go and buy one that's 12 grand as opposed to one you've got, which is perfectly serviceable, it's four. And van on the run has put me straight. He says, um, add blue is used, because there's three things apparently in the engine. Add blue is used as a catalyst to break down the nitrous oxide, which is produced by the engine. Um, Exhaust gas recirculation (EGR) also works to lower the the, the, um, the um, emissions, and the DPF filter, the diesel particulate, particulate filter, captures solid carbon particles, basically spot soot. I think that should be um, might be spot. Um, when it's collected uh, and it goes through, and when it's, when it's yeah, when it's collected so much, it goes through a regeneration cycle, which means it gets really hot and burns it all off. Um, these three things cause the majority of trouble on diesel engines. A basic diesel engine without these emission systems are incredibly reliable. Now, I remember when I've got my first lorry back about 20 odd years ago, Shirley, and they said, you know, that was my Vico, and they said, they'll do a million miles. Then I had to have a catalytic converter fitted on it, and from that point onwards, it just it killed my truck. Slowly but surely, it, was, it took a while, but slowly but surely, it just drained the life out of her. I always thought if I had a band, uh, if I was ever like, you know, we're, well, I'm in a band at the moment called Biscuits, but we don't record. Um, if I ever actually release an album, I would call it A Cat Killed My Shirley, because a catalytic converter actually was the reason that my truck blew up, I think. One day, I was driving to work, and it just went, Psh, water over the windscreen. I thought, that's not good. And that was the end of Shirley. Then we jumped in the van, and, and thus, <laughs> and the rest is history, although I was still on the market then. Um, Gula Eugen says, um, 
wouldn't it be nice now we're going again on the environmental thing about the fact that we're on uh, paper PODs. Wouldn't it be nice if everybody would charge five to ten pound on shippers who ask for paper PODs invoice? Um, it's only normal to charge for time, consumable for postage. Uh, that would make them change to electronic faster. Um, yeah, that's that's the long and short of it, really. Uh, that's kind of he rants on a little, but that, no, no, it's a rant that we've all done before, and it's kind of a frustration as a part. Of the, we, we, we're sending them the electronic ones. One of my favourite jobs come through. We said we do not want invoices. This is the twenty first century. You scan it. If my customer wants it, I can print it. Sometimes people use it as an excuse because it's like we don't pay until we get the POD, which means if you as a driver decide not to send your PODs in for two weeks, they don't have to pay you for an extra two weeks. I've only just got your PODs, mate. I've also heard it used as an excuse. I haven't got your PODs. You've had a month, two months to tell me this, you know. Um, on the flip side of things, from a shipper's point of view, some customers still require signed PODs. So they need the POD off you so that they can then get it to their customer because their customer won't pay them until they've got the signed PODs. Once again, whether they're using it as an excuse, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm in total agreement with you, mate. I think it's the 21st century. I think you should be able to sign it. Particularly now we've got phones where you can actually take um, a photo of the goods delivered at a point. So the guy can't turn around and say, oh, I haven't got them, because then you just turn around and just ping him back an email, go, here are the pallets delivered outside your yard with you standing next to them on a fork truck. It's, it's another world and it's kind of, it's somewhat um, they call it anachronistic in the fact that parts of us do still live in the past. But the problem is, well, we, it's, as much as I agree with you, there are lots of things in this life that I would like to change, but can't. So yeah, you are dead right, mate. It is bizarre. And if you try and add five or 10 pound, all that's gonna do is increase shippers costs. It's just, it's, it will happen in time. <laughs> <laughs> Sooner rather than later would be lovely, but in the meantime, we are stuck with what we've got. Uh, Sean Gill Martin, oh, because I did say about there are other truck driver channels out there, which there certainly are. Uh, he said, Ned Kenny is very funny, um, especially when he starts ranting, but he hasn't posted since the lockdown. He's knocking on a bit of then, I think, you know, he's all, from the one I saw of him, he was like a, a, an older Irish guy, like, you know, so I'm, I imagine he's been doing it a little while. I said, I don't really get time to um, watch anyone else's channel. I'm, I'm looking at that grass over there thinking that needs going. Um, and he said, regarding, because I did, we, we did do one where we picked up and the shipper said it was going to Watford and it turned out to be going to Kentish Town. And he turned around and said, you should still be able to deliver it. And it's the different, we, we can't drive in. We've got 18 tonnes, which are, which if we have to drive, them, they need to have um, DSV, which we haven't got. It's £100 to drive past the camera anyway, and that's if you've got the DSV. Um, and so it, it's a £500 fine if we drive it in. The job was only worth 450 quid. Um, he said... Um, Regarding the Watford Kentish Town debacle, this is a trick that some um, shippers employ to bounce you into doing a job they're struggling to cover. I think that's a reasonable point. The problem is because we work as a company, we send a job through to the driver and then the driver does the job. What and, and 99% of the time it's absolutely fine. But if that job had pinged through and Gemma had read it before she allocated it across to Harry, she would have run the guy back and went, hang on a second. You said Watford. This isn't Watford. So, but sometimes you're going to come unstuck. We had a, a, a wood delivery this week and it tumbled. Um, it wasn't me. It was Gordon. Um, it's not. I've done it. It was his fault. Sometimes it happens. As it is, the wood delivery jobs are multi drops. And they don't pay enough. And they're a nightmare anyway. So we'll probably have to swallow any damages that are in, and then we'll go no, no more on them because they're grief anyway. They don't take enough money. So multi drops not always grief. This particular one, it just, for the amount of drops, it just doesn't pay enough. So again, as I've said all the way along, if it doesn't pay, don't do it. Do the jobs that pay the right money. You know, if, if it turns around and says, job pays 50 quid, Edinburgh to Portsmouth, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Let someone else do it. There's plenty of work for those that work for nothing. Hey, Dave. Uh, Terry Shute says, he said, I drive an 18 done DAF um, flatbed delivering coal and logs around Somerset and Devon, Wiltshire. He said, nearly every road I have to deliver is unsuitable for an HGV. And I wonder, yeah, I get that, unsuitable for HGVs. But then if, 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 if you're like um, half a mile away from the delivery point, it's like, well, where else am I supposed to go? Like, you know? Um, sometimes I wonder how I get through it. A couple of times I've had people say, you shouldn't be down here. Well, if I don't, some poor little old lady will freeze to death. That's very frustrating as well. 
we had that on the, the huge driver training that one of the guys was telling me a guy had just passed his test and they were coming back in the 18 tonne through one of the villages he's just passed his test he's over the moon geezer are screaming at him you shouldn't be driving this truck down here as it is any truck that's on a driving test can drive anywhere it likes it, you can say no vehicles over seven and a half tons if you are but some of some test routes for like arctics run through seven and a half tons you know no vehicles bigger than seven and a half tons because they're testing you to make sure you can do it like i think that's right i know it does in the 18 tons but um yeah and I, I, i'm also curious now guys i'm still on the, the um sat nav debacle um, I've been using that, the kind of the uh, the ex, expo, whatever it is, used it for a little while. I've also found big screens. They're a pain. I don't want a nine inch screen. I only want a five inch screen because it's just in the way in the truck. It's just a little one, you know, and it's it's all right. It's just not that smooth. So I've, I've used road laws a couple of I'd started using road laws and it kept um, kicking me out. So I'm still. We're still out there for the best trucks out now for you truckers that are watching the channel. Um, again, I'm a bit like that on the fence with the Tom Tom. Some people say it's brilliant. Some people say it's not worth the money. So, thoughts? I, I, I'll have to worry about it. I mean, when I'm in the puddle jumper, it's fine. When I jump in a bigger one, I'll have to think about it. But at the moment, we kind of cool. Um, pardon me. Chris C says, been doing Hermes overnight stuff at weekend. He said, I usually get the job on a Saturday night. Drop off early Sunday morning and go to bed. Then use Sunday morning, afternoon, Monday to get a job to take me back home. This makes it hit my weekly target easier because you're already on 250, 300 pounds. It's only Monday. I used to do that when I was in a van. You can't do it so much in a lorry because you've got the hours and you've got the clock and you can only drive for so much. You've got to have like, I, I had to take it for a test drive today, which means you, only, you can really, the Janet and John version is every weekend. Every other weekend you can run for a day. That's the Janet and John version. It's not quite right, but if you stick, it's kind of right. I had to drive the lorry for 15 minutes today. So I put my card in to drive the 15 minutes, which means next weekend if a job comes in, I can't take it. But I kind of had to do the test drive to make sure the lorry's all right. I've got this kind of funny problem. It keeps, keeps missing. You're driving and you might drive it for like 10 minutes, it misses. And I'm thinking, mm, that doesn't sound good. It sounds like it could be injectors, but then as my mechanic said, it could be anything. Could be injectors, could be ECU, could be faults, could be fuels, could be um, a blockage, could be uh, uh, anyone. Anyone who's had this kind of problem in the DAF LF, please let me know. <coughs> Once again, I'm happy to pass it on, particularly to me. <laughs> so there we go. But um, yeah, I had to drive that day, so we'll see. Yeah, but I used to do that in a Luton van, and it was dead handy. You know, occasionally you'd get, I mean, I had one Metro's in once. Can you deliver it to Brighton? Uh, seven o'clock in the morning because Brighton goes pedestrianised. So I had it loaded on the Friday night. I delivered it to Brighton on seven o'clock in the morning, and then another pub just around the corner in Brighton, and then went into London, and then went home. And the money that I got for that, I think I got like three hundred and fifty quid for the morning in a Luton van, and that was like that had put me onto my target for like Tuesday afternoon instantly. So yeah, I do understand how you can get a jump on it. Um, there is all the flip side of things, which is. You know, you only get one ticket to the gun show and you don't want to work too hard. From my point of view in a lorry, they've, they've imposed it on me. They went, no, you can't run. You can run it, like I said, every other weekend. So, um, I'll be cutting that grass. That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> um, Stephen Campbell, because we said about what you should lift. He said, I don't lift anything bigger than a ratchet strap because I'm a lazy. You can't read that last word, Stephen. Uh, it's down to you. You lift what you want to lift. You lift what you're comfortable with. But as one of the guys said in, in, in the previous videos, he said, you know, you as a sub, you, I think it was Godzilla's, you don't get employed if you don't go to work. And it was it Steve, was it you that fell off the lorry? It was, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe taking, maybe not lifting something rather than a ratchet strap. It's not because you're lazy, it's because you're clever. And you don't want to, you know, throw yourself a mischief. I'm, I'm the idiot that goes, I can lift that. You'll see me one day, bent over making videos. Um, Arpad says, um, because I did the video about him uh, recently about the subcontracting, uh, he said, Europe, oh, yeah, because we did about also going into Europe, um, which is the best platform. He says the best platform for Europe is Timcom, T I M C O M platform, is the way forward for owner drivers. CX is nowhere for Europe, and he said, Thanks for the video. It's my, gen it's my gen genuine pleasure, my friend. Thank you for um, commenting. If anyone knows anything about Timcom, like I say, I don't run in Europe, but if anyone does, I'm curious, I'll have a little look, and obviously I'll pass it on to anybody who wants to have a go. So there we go. I've got standard national, I can't run in Europe even if I want to at the moment. But you guys in vans, you can drive wherever you like. Um, Marcelo Tarsia says, 
He said, hello Pete, I want to start a transportation business with a loot and van or an extra long wheelbase. Which should I purchase? Um, and about Amazon Relay, if they have work. I would, I personally think that Amazon is hard work. Any multi-drop is hard work. Um, I think you're better. My advice to anyone who says about coming on the exchange is I said, for the money that you make on Amazon on the exchange, you'll make the same money for a lot less work. Or if you work as hard as you do on Amazon, you'll make more money. I would always recommend, my, my recommendation is always loot them with a tail lift and a curtain side if you can get it. Um, and which value should you purchase? There is a video. I'll do a link, but it's 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 very much um, a personal preference. But if you want my opinion, I think the best vehicle that you can run in to start with, I always say the best vehicle is an eighteen-ton truck. But to start with, start in a Luton with a tail, and if you can get a curtain side, because that covers pretty much all the early jobs. Um, but then some people make good money in small vans. Some people there's, there's there's pros and cons to all of them. Like I say, there is a video out there. I'll do a link. Hope that helps. Uh, Godzilla's. He said, Pete, meant to ask, I can't remember if I did, Dop. <laughs> what you get in a gallon out of Alice, roughly that is, um, and when's the next day in your life? Um, I tend to, well, I'm useless at this kind of stuff because I was gallons and I didn't understand gallons and they went to litres. But the way I work it, I, I did actually, there is an RPM, I click the button and it says I'm getting 17 and a half miles to the gallon on average. Then it's a you know, trip 19 and a half. Sometimes you're going down the motorway, it's telling me I'm getting 100 miles a gallon. Sometimes it's telling me I'm getting nine. The way I work it is the the tank holds 100 litres. And so, and that gives me on average about 400 miles. So I, I tend to work out and I, I put it up pound a litre, although it's not because it's getting dearer. It's now one pound 10, but for the sake of 10p, in my mind, 100 miles cost me 25 quid. So if the job's 100 miles, and I'm going to bid them 250 quid, because that's, kind of, that's £2.50 a mile, and I know it's going to cost me about 25 quid in diesel. But, you, you know, and then you've got your tax and all that, your wear and tear and all that kind of stuff out of it. But it's still, it's still decent, though, you know what I'm saying. Um, Liam Boyd says, thanks for the video. It's great video. Thank you very much. Um, where do you keep – where you keep your truck is where I did my training. Yes. I, who did you have? Um, Brendan took me. But Liam, if you're watching, let me know who your trainer was and I'll remind him to you. Are you a local man then? I'm kind of, I, I live just down the road, obviously, because that's where I park my lorry. But uh, yeah, uh, the Q's driver training do park next to us. I would recommend them. Um, I, they're all over the country, but I can't recommend the people over the country. I can only recommend the mob that I see out the warehouse and they're, they're lovely. And they got me free first time. So it's not a plug. They don't give me any money. Just work for me. Uh, Jamie Richardson said, oh yeah, because we're going to zones. Zones are cropping up everywhere now. He said, I was reading about the Birmingham Zone last week and I was flicking through the pages on directgov.com and came across a postcode checker to see if they're in the zone or not. Birmingham and Bath. Mate, I'm going to have to try and check that one out. If you know a little bit more, if you could stick it in the comments, because I've got one, I've got an app, which will check if it's in or not. It's not, it's not foolproof, it's not bulletproof, but um, it gives me a rough idea of whether where I'm going into London is in the zone or not. But it is a bit of a pain though if before I've got to check every job I've got to work out whether it is or it, it may or may not be in the zone and well, you ring them up and they say it's not in the zone you send it through and you put it in the sat nav and it is it's kind of tedious but it's, it's, it's an occupational hazard isn't it really but yeah Jamie any more information on that would be lovely cheers bud um, Pillshark said yeah, but back on the zone again. He said, Bristol is about to start a clean air zone at the cost of £9 a day. Not sure how much it is for wagons. After they said it wouldn't happen. 20 years ago, they were... Yeah, this is true as well. He said, 20 years ago, we were shamed into buying diesels to save the planet. Now it's diesel time. Everyone's got to buy EVs. Do the public really think after a few years they won't be taxing them? It's all about revenue. I'm inclined to agree with you uh, about the revenue thing. I do understand the emissions thing. What kind of frustrates me at the moment, I know we're moving over to clean energy, but we're not quite there yet. At the moment, if you're driving an electric vehicle, how do you think that electricity is created? That's created by somebody somewhere burning some coal. Or it might be a wind farm. It might be hydroelectric power. Or it might be that someone's pumping oil out of the sea and burning it to make... Um, to make and also, it's a very inefficient way of doing it. If you put petrol in an engine and you burn the petrol, you get 100% of the energy. If you burn petrol to make electricity, you get one-tenth of the energy. So we're getting there, and I know we need to move in the right direction. I know it's for the kids and for the planet and all that kind of stuff, and I know that renewables have come on leaps and bounds, but where we are at the moment, there is a little bit of a frustration in the fact that bits people are telling me. You kind of go, 
I know what you're saying in principle is right, but where I am in time at the moment, it doesn't quite stack up. So, anyway, but yeah, I remember everyone said, Why do we, we have petrols? Don't get petrols, get diesels. And one, we got a diesel car. My wife couldn't believe it. She was doubling the amount of um, miles she could get out for the same tank of petrol. We've got a petrol one at the moment. She said, I forgot how much it was. You know, I fill up and the, watch the needle go down twice as fast. But, oh, I say, it's what it is, isn't it, really, guys? You know, um, Paul Davis. He says, hi, mate, just something to check out. I'd like to mention, something to mention. He said, there's an app for checking vehicles history called Car Vertical. Check it out. I haven't had a chance to do it, but if you're buying a, a car, a car vertical, give it a go. Let me know what you think. Hmm. That's better. Um, Mr. Bruce says, he said, Pete, um, the suggestion, because there, there's been talk about the idea of tacos going into vans. And guys, it's just talk. Nothing, there's nothing in legislation, nothing at the moment. It's like our wedding. It's lovely. It's, look at that. That's wisteria. I planted that. I planted all of that. When I got here, it was mud. Never thought I'd be a gardener. No, I love it. Um, right. He said, yeah, he said the suggestion that tacos are going into vans around 2005. It's, I think it's just driver's gossip. Like I say, I, I've heard nothing of it. If it does, again, it'll be like the zones. It'll be like EVs. It'll be like flying cars and robots. It's something else we'll contend with. But at the moment, I think we just focus on what we can do and worry about what we can't do later. Uh, Jay Webb says, he said, if I run abroad, I'd charge the ferry there and back. Some are happy to pay both ways. Some don't. If they don't, they can find someone else. That's very good advice, Jay. You, you got like so. When you bid on that job, and I keep saying, you bid what you're happy to do the job for. Someone turns around and say, "Well, I'm happy to do the job for 150 quid." He says, "Well, I've got a quote for 120." I'm going to let them do it then. You know, there's a good chance they'll come unstuck, or maybe they're not as good as you. But you bid what you're happy to do the job for, and I think you're right. And there is, I suppose, what I would do is I would charge both ways, and I'd be checking it all the time for like that one time in ten or that one time in a hundred where you're on like cows. Or you're in sort of, you know, the capital of Jersey, whatever that is, and a job pings up and you go, I can't believe this. <laughs> this is all the makings of my lucky day. Um, and finally, from James, he said, You mentioned you have a few other trucks and you've just passed your class two. I have two questions for you. How do you run your other lorries if you can't run them on the exchange, or is it just AI? I don't know what it is. And have you jumped in an 18 ton yet? Uh, we run the lorries on the haulage exchange which is basically exactly the same as a courier exchange, but I think it might be 36 quid a month more, or it might even be less than that, it might be 36 quid a quarter, and it shows all the jobs up to six axles. Um, and have I jumped in 18 tonne yet? No, because they're all too dear, and I'm happy in my seven and a half tonne. When the time comes, something will happen to Alice, you know, bless her, I'm not concerned about these injectors. Um, they might go, or, well, you know, I've, I've always been a bit like this with life in the fact that you don't try and force it. You try and kind of, it's, it's like swimming upstream, you try and go with it and something will happen and, or, or a lorry will appear or someone will say this or a, a, a thing will go, oh, I've got some really cheap lease vehicles or something will happen and I will find myself in a bigger truck or I won't. The advantage I have now is the fact I can get in a bigger truck because I've got the garden. I'm pleased I passed it. It's nice, nice pass. Yeah. So, so in conclusion, what we got today, the final sort of, like I say, if you missed um, the first part of uh, Sunday Q and A, it's because I recorded it and put it out yesterday morning. Um, uh, but this is all the miscellaneous. We had, in conclusion, we had Alan Partridge. Who said, I'm doing my best impression here, it's not great. It's, um, Every time I buy something from Argos, it's out of stock. It's so irritating. They should take it off if they're not selling it. <laughs> I, I, I give them that. No, I can't do it. Uh, I think there's only two impressions I can do, and they're both of um, breakfast show puppets. Um, I'll do them for you one day. <laughs> uh, Roland, Rat and Zig and Zag are the only two impressions I can do to any great skill. Um, what else have we got? Urban Trucker, the new guy to the channel, mate. Thanks very much for the contribution. I think you did leave one two hours ago, but I think it was too late to get on the uh, on the um, on the questions. I'll do it next week. He said, "My uncle." He said, "Hi, Pete. My uncle always used to refer to a grand as a Jeffrey because we did the video about um, market trades and Cockney money." Yeah, I think that was because um, Mr. Archer, the the novelist and conservative politician, had a bit of a. a a dalliance with with a, a, a certain lady 
who was going to sell her story to papers and he basically gave her a grand in a brown paper envelope and the um, press got onto it and it just, he, he should have just let them sell the thing to the papers but I know other people call that a Jeffrey I think you know if you do say it's a Jeffrey there's a few people out there that will know what you're talking about and finally from Urban Trucker once again, thanks very much for the channel. He said, Pete, I love the flute and LJ. It sounds like I'm trying to get a tune out of it. I can't read that last word. Mate, it's a family show. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, I'll do something next week. I've kind of lost the list I had. I wrote it on a piece of paper of all the questions you've asked. So if you've asked me to do a video and I haven't done it, do me a favour re-stick it in the comments and I'll, I'll bang one out next week. And also, I bought myself a new toy. I've gone and bought myself another little camera so I can record going along at the same time as other bits and pieces. So I might do a few more days in the life. They seem to go down okay. Although I cannot see. Well, how was your day today? I have to come in and try and make things up. You know, or, or, or discuss what went on Jeremy Vine or the new song that was played on Sean Keaveney, which is like, uh, how was your day? I drove to a distribution centre where a man in a fork truck put some pallets on my lorry. Then I drove to another distribution centre and a man with a fork truck took some pallets off my lorry. And then in the afternoon, I drove to a distribution... I mean, I'm boring myself. But who knows? Every time I seem to do a day in her life, it all goes sideways anyway. So um, let's see. In the meantime, sunny Q&A. Sun is shining. Barbecue, beer, football. Game of two halves, isn't it? Ball. Jump us for goalposts. Take care, take money.